The reality of the Gospel World Outreach Ministries presents the Voice of Deliverance broadcast, featuring the explosive preaching, bold teaching, and the powerful prayer of deliverance of Heaven's Ambassador, Leonard Ford. Brother Ford is a minister that does what others don't, and he has a ministry that goes where others won't. He and his wife, Jesse travel across America and around the world, preaching hope and bringing deliverance. Whether they are in the church, under the gospel tent, or on the mission field, they boldly declare that if you continue in the word, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now I present to you, Brother Ford. But after the preacher preached it, they have not all obeyed it. See, just because somebody's preaching don't really mean you receive it. Just because they preach it don't really mean you accepting what's being preached. And because, and the evidence to it is you ain't acting on it, you don't believe it. So, well, ah, that was a good word, but what I was, I enjoyed that word. My fact, no, I love that word. I see you a month later, you're doing that word. No, I ain't done that word yet. Like somebody told me they bought one of my books, but they ain't read it yet. But I got it. It's like having a Bible that you ain't read yet. You got it. <laughs> Isaiah said, Lord, who hath what? Believe your report. Oh, I, now, he didn't say who heard it. They all heard it, but they didn't all believe it. That's why we can go to the same church with the same pastor, be there every service, and have different qualities of life. We all heard the word from the same man of God, though we heard it under the same anointing. We heard it under the same clarity. We heard it under the same explanation and revelation, but yet in our lives, there's different levels of manifestation. Somebody is not doing something with the word. So then, faith cometh by hearing. But wait a minute. They all heard, but they didn't all believe. So faith is not automatic just because the word was preached. Faith come up, notice, by hearing. Have you ever noticed how you act when the pastor is trying to repeat a sermon? Hey, y'all, he preached that back in March. You ain't walking in it. You ain't living in it. You need to hear it again. They went to Dad Hagen one day and said, Pastor, hey, Brother Hagen, you've been preaching faith for over 40 years. How long are you going to, when you going to change? He said, when you get this, we'll move on to something else. Think about it. The average Christian you know still ain't got a harness on how to live by faith. Or they, they talk. They talk faith when they got money in the bank, money in their pocket, and a secure job. Lose the job, money still in their pocket, money still in the bank, and they're nervous. I don't know what I'm going to do. I lost my job. You know, I ain't got but $10,000. And $10,000 probably won't last me, but, but about two months, I don't know what I'm going to do. God got two months to get you another job, and you're so nervous, you messed all up. Because your focus was never on him. That job was your source. Okay, let's go to Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4. I'm talking about obedience and faith are master keys. If obedience and faith are master keys, I need to find out how to get these keys in my hands. I need to find out how to, how to, how to come to that place of confidence and that place of obedience. Because see, really, obedience to a command is the evidence of your confidence in it. I always talk about when... Uh, Dr. Summerall was at our church, and he put this little three-year-old girl up on the stage. She's three or four years old, and he said, jump. And she just stood there and looked at that big old man. Jump, I'm going to catch you. She just looked at it. Jump, I'm going to catch you. She just looked at it. He said, who's her daddy? He get up, little skinny fella. He walk up there, and he said, tell her to jump. He said, jump, baby. He looked at the congregation. He said, now, what's the difference? Relationship and trust. My daddy done called me so many times off the top of the car. I know he's gonna catch my these little old stuff. Hey, what, but this big dude right here, I don't know him. He might let me fall. Some of y'all jump when the devil say jump and stand still when God say jump. Oh, quiet and Zion. Hebrews 4, verse 1. Let us therefore fear least a promise. Being left us of the inner into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. Faith come how? And hearing by. So the gospel was preached unto us just like it was preached unto them. 
But watch this. But the word preached did not profit them not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Okay, if the word is what produces my faith, what keeps me from producing, from mixing my faith with the word that I'm hearing? That means I didn't act on it. See, I'm trying to get you to understand. Just because you sit out there and you, hear, and you understand intellectually does not mean faith has come. It means you got to spend some time meditating on that word. You got to go back and study that word. You got to go back and search that word. You got to go back and research that word. That word ought to be on your mind all week long. That word ought to be on your mind when you leave church and you're at the dinner. After church and you go to dinner, you ought to be at the dinner table talking about that word. Because that word, that word caught a hold to me. That word got a root in me. I want that word to be a seed. I don't want it just laying up on stony ground. I want that word to germinate and produce root. I'm going to water that word. I'm going to go back home and look at the scripture for myself. Watch this now. For we which have believed do enter into rest. Notice what he didn't say. He didn't say we which have heard. They heard, but they didn't enter in. We which have heard enter in. Only if we believe what we heard. Hmm. As I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. Verse 4. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise. And God did rest the seventh day from all his works. And in this place, again, if they shall enter into my rest, verse 6, seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief. Wait a minute. What come by hearing? They heard, but they didn't get in because they didn't believe what they heard. You know, folks hear the word of God. Yeah, that Bible said that, but you wonder where your faith is. How you going to get faith from what the word said? You challenging what the word said. I know the Bible said that, but you know, you got to use some common sense. Don't be no fool. We ain't tell you to be no fool. We tell you to have some faith. Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28. <laughs> Faith and obedience. So I get faith from the word of God, but I'm trying to get you to see my faith from the word. Paul said one plant, one water, but God gives the increase. So once the word of God is preached to me in church, I got to go home and water that word. That word been preached to me. I, I spent my time in praise and worship, broke up my fallow ground. I was praying and repenting Saturday before I got to church Sunday, got all the stones out. Now my heart is chimney is ready. The preacher come out the so and so of the word, and that ain't the end of it. Now I got to go water that word. I got to go nurture that word. I got to go meditate on that word. I got to keep that word turning over in me because I want to see that word. In other words, that word from the preacher is information, but I want that information to become revelation so I can do some application and I can get the manifestation of what the information from the preacher said is bound to me because he got the information out the covenant. Deuteronomy 28, I want verse 1 and 2. And it shall come to pass, what's that next word? Oh, it's conditional. If it's conditional. It shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken. You know what that means? That means to hear intelligently with the intent to obey. If you will hearken diligently, huh? Unto what? Unto what? The voice. Please, let me tell you something. The voice of God is what you hear when you're in the car. The voice of God is what you hear when you vacuum in your carpet, your rug. The voice of God is what you hear when you're washing dishes or loading the dishwasher. The voice of God is what you hear when you're on your morning walk or your morning job. What am I trying to get you to understand? It's the voice of God that speaks to you when your Bible is somewhere closed. You got to understand faith is supposed to come from that as well as when you hear it preached by the preacher. And let me tell you something. Before Deuteronomy, there is no Bible to read. The book of Genesis was not written when Adam was walking the earth. The book of Genesis was not written when Enoch was walking with God. Enoch's faith came from walking with God. Abel's faith came from his fellowship with God. What am I telling you? We don't put enough... We, you know, we, we play with the thing when it comes to hearing the voice of God. But hearing the voice of God is essential. You don't just override that. Faith comes by hearing. That's why I had the word slash voice of God. What am I telling you? 
until Joshua comes on the scene, there's not a man on the planet with a Bible. Okay? Moses receives from God because he was a prophet. God takes him back through the word of knowledge, shows him the past, which is creation, and brings him all the way up to the present. And then when Moses leaves the scene, he gives Joshua what we call the Torah, the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible. And then God tells Joshua this book of the law. Particularly this book. Before Joshua, you don't hear Jacob with no Bible. You don't see Jacob with no stroll. Jacob is praying and talking to God. Now you get it double. You got the word and the Holy Ghost to talk to you. If thou wilt hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments. I'm going to observe. I'm going to pay attention. I'm going to focus. I'm going to regard it which I command thee this day, now that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. And we're trying to figure out why God ain't set us on high. When are he going to set me on high? He said he would in his word, not only it was conditional. If you do your part, if you believe and obey. Verse 2, and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. We're trying to figure out, why am I chasing blessings and can't catch them? And ain't no blessing trying to catch me. You're not hearkening to the voice of the Lord. He said this only happens through faith and obedience. See, the covenant is intact. The covenant is right. We just got to find the keys. We just gotta, he told Peter, upon this rock I build my church, right? But he also told him, I give you the keys of the kingdom. The kingdom, the system of God, obedience and faith are two master keys to the whole system of God. I got to believe God and I got to do what he say. Do, do, doing what he says is evidence that I believe what I heard. That's why I gave you the example. Man say jump, she ain't believe him, she ain't trust him, so she ain't jump. Daddy say jump, relationship, fellowship, a little history with him, she, she jumped freely. So I, I'm trying to figure out why come as Christian, now I know, I know, I, I, was, I was a sinner. 20 three years before I got saved, okay? I got saved on June the 10th, 1980, on Tuesday night. And I got hungry for the word. The next day, I was in the word. I was reading the word. I was so hungry for the word, y'all. Now, I'm, I'm talking about, I ain't, I ain't, I, I wasn't raised in church. Two of my uncles had juke joints. That's, I spent my time at the pool table and the crap table. Huh? Shooting dice, cussing, that's what I did. Now, I ain't drink. I never did drink and smoke because, you know, I was, I was a country boy. And them, them, you know how hot it'd be like 91, 93? And them, them rolls was like a mile long. And I got a hole in my hand and some, some broke down boots on my shoes. And I got to cut weeds down there and get a drink of water, cut weeds back about and get a drink of water. I ain't about to burn that up. I don't, don't want to light no cigarettes. No, forget that. And the reason I didn't drink because my stepdaddy was the best man in town Sunday through Thursday. Friday, when he got paid, he was a weekend hero. And the only thing I could see did that to him was that alcohol. So I made a decision as a young boy, I would never drink. I ain't talking about I was saved. I wasn't saved. I didn't get saved until I was 23. I ain't go to church except you know, I went on Easter to get them eggs. But other than that, I ain't go to church. I ain't know nothing about no church. I ain't have no religion in me, nothing. But I got hungry for God. And I'm telling you, in 90 days, I done got saved, filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm reading 40 chapters a day, and I did the unthinkable. I started a Bible study in my house. Now, what do I know? I've been saved 90 whole days. You know what I knew? What the Bible said. If you read 40 chapters a day, you read the whole Bible in a month. You can read the whole Bible every, every, every three, three times a year. I just saw what it said. I didn't know it meant what it said. I just taught him what it said and found out that's what it meant. Okay, let's move on. So have you noticed that obedience is a prerequisite to receiving the covenant provisions? A prerequisite is a thing that is required as a prior condition for something to happen, exist, or manifest. Have you noticed obedience is a prerequisite? See, I understand faith is the currency of the kingdom. Anything you want to purchase in the natural, you just take some dollars down there and they'll give it to you, right? You, if you walk in there with enough dollars, you'll walk out with what you want. 
Why? Because dollars and cents are the medium of exchange in our industrial world. All right. Well, in the kingdom, faith is the medium of exchange and obedience is the hand that extends it. So you got to understand something. I got to get in this work. Like, you know, if I'm going to get some dollars and cents, I'm going to work sometime over time. Why come when it comes to the word of God, I ain't going to study sometime over time. I ain't going to meditate sometime over time. I ain't going to research sometime over time. Go to church more than once a week. What? What? Go to church midweek service. Why? I done heard the preacher. I ain't going to say much Wednesday night. You could be at work, about to clock off, and they come down and say, uh, we're giving out overtime, and anybody that'll work for three more hours, we're not going to just give you time and a half. We're going to give you double time. Sign me up. I thought you had something to do. I'm going to call. Hey, baby, listen in. I got opportunities. I'm going to be <laughs> But then you come home and ain't nothing going on. Baby, so you know what? We ain't got nothing to do today. Let, let's study the Bible. Why? I went to church Sunday. I know what I know what Rev said. You see what I'm saying? We, we're missing it. Y'all didn't like that. It's all right. You weren't supposed to like it. Look at Genesis 12. Genesis chapter 12. Faith, confidence in God. Trust in God, a trust, a confidence in God that's based on the word of God, that's founded on the persuasion from the word of God creates a trust in me to where I act on what he said and do what I hear him say. So now my faith and my obedience, because God said, if I bring the tithe and offer the end, he going to rebuke the devourer for my sake. God said, if I sow the seed, he going to multiply the seed so God said, if I lay hands on the sick in the name of Jesus, He's going, they're going to recover. I got to get to the point where I expect that to happen. I don't just do it, whatever. It is. I'm, I'm just going to do it and see what happens. Nothing. See, he said, if any two gather together in my name, I'm there in the midst, right? You know, we just came to church. We ain't come in the name of Jesus. We ain't come to think about Jesus, represent Jesus. We ain't think about Jesus and the preacher start preaching. Well, I, it's three of us here. You, we, they ain't what he's talking about. Now the Lord has said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curse of thee, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So Abram departed as the Lord has spoken unto him. Wait a minute. Does he know where he's going? Because he said, I'm, I'm going to show you, right? See, at least when you get in your car today, you know what city you want to go to, you know what street you want to go on, and what address on that street. You ain't never been there, but you got a GPS. You got your global positioning system. And you are so confident in it, it's going to get you there. But how many know sometimes, boy, you get out there in them boondocks and it disconnect on the satellite, and that booger gets to spinning and talking about recalculating, and they tell you, you have arrived, and all you see is the corn field. I ain't arrived, there definitely ain't nothing but alive. I'm going to keep driving. Then it picked back up. Mm. And you say, ain't you glad God don't have, to, don't have to get disconnected? But I found out something. He will recalculate your course. When you get off course, He'll show you how to get back on course. You take an unnecessary detour. You know, some GPSs, they got detours built in. If you want to take a detour, just get the button and say detour. As soon as you take your detour, it'll get you back on course. Well, you know if the GPS can do it, the Holy Ghost is way much smarter than that. Hebrews 11. I want, I want to take you to Hebrews 11 now because we just talked about Abraham leaving not knowing. See, sometimes you got to take Bold steps of faith, not knowing. Not knowing what it is. I, all I know is God told me to go to do Noah. I'm here to know. Where you going? I don't know yet. I'm just following the voice of God. What you ain't folks take now, that's just ludicrous. That's stupid. That ain't God. They don't even know God. They wouldn't know God if he walked in here with a red suit on right now. But they're trying to guide your life and they're jacked up. In Hebrews 11, look at verse 8. By what? Faith, confident trust in God. 
Abraham when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance obey and he went out what? Not knowing. Sometimes you just got to take bold steps of obedience not knowing. I don't know how this is going to turn out but I trust God. God told me to go. I don't know I'm going because I trust God. So you got to understand. Now I don't get it. We don't trust God but we'll trust some old con man. Quiet in Zion. By faith he sojourned in the land of promises in a strange country, dwelling in the tabernacle with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which had foundations, whose builder and maker was God. Now I go back to Deuteronomy. Because sometimes the Bible tells us that the blessings of Abraham are ours, right? Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree, so that the blessing of Abraham might come on us through Christ, right? And then we go read Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28 ain't the blessing of Abraham. This is the blessing of Moses. Abraham already dead. Well, Abraham didn't hear this. Abraham was already dead before this ever was taught. We're in verse 3 now, Deuteronomy 28, 3. Blessed shall thou be in the city. And blessed shall thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, and the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shall thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shall thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall call thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy faith. They shall come out against thee one way, and flee before thee. Seven ways. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses and in all that thou settest thine hand unto. And he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Lord shall establish thee a holy people unto himself as he hath sworn unto thee. If thou wilt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways and all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body, in the fruit of thy cattle, in the fruit of thy ground, in the land which the Lord swear to thy fathers to give thee. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure to heaven, to give thee rain unto thy land in his season, and to his and to bless all the work of thine hand, and thou shalt lend to many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail, and thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. Uh-oh. If thou shalt hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them. Now, we lack verse 3 through 12. One, 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 two, and 13. I read one and two while ago. Y'all ain't even smiling. Huh? Well, well, when I was, I ain't even look up at I can feel you smiling while I was reading three to 12. I get to 13, y'all look down again. And verse 14 says, and in addition to that, thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I command thee this day to the right hand or to the left. That means you can't modify the word of God to fit your particular situation. It ain't modifiable for, well, you know, I know God said that. But see, me and God, we got this thing going. And God understands me. God understands all of us. That's why he gave us the word. Yeah, but see, but, 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 but you understand. See, me and the Lord, we, we, it's right here. It's right here with me and the Lord. And I'm, hey, God, God, I don't talk much about it because, you know, I don't want folks to get jealous. But, you know, I'm his favorite child. I got some liberties. The devil is a lie. I'm just going to have to go and tell you so you won't continue in that foolishness. He said, don't go to the right hand or to the left, and don't go after other gods, small g's, to serve them. You got folks chasing everything but God now. They follow other stuff. So we, we just read it in Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 4. I'm going to read verse 4 again. So Abram departed as the Lord has spoken unto him. Now, I know I didn't read the part about Lot going with him. I, went, I didn't want that part. Romans chapter 4. Verse 17. Romans chapter 4, verse 17. I want to wake you back up to Abram. God has spoke to Abraham. He told Abram something before he became Abraham. Abram walking with God 
that God gave him a promise when he was 75 and by 86, that promise hadn't came to pass. So guess what he did? He acted just like those of us in the good old USA. He figured it out. Him and Sarah got together and said, aha, I can have a surrogate mother to give me a child. So I tell you what to do, honey. Go in there and sleep with my maid, get her pregnant, and then we'll have a child. Abraham in his car now just says, sound good to me. They kind of checking on girl out in the house. Yes, it's, 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 it's your suggestion. I mean, you know, can't get upset. It's your idea. So he goes in there and boom, she gets pregnant. And as soon as she realized she's pregnant, I mean, you know, she's showing now. He has several faith back. You can't do this. I'm doing something for your husband that you can't do. They were already upset. But then the child is born. And she disdained Sarah. Sarah go to Abraham and he said, do whatever seemed right to you. Oh, but she, she put up with it. The, the girl get up, you know, she run off. The angel said, go on back. Go on back and submit yourself to your mistress. Then mess around here. God visits them and changes her name from old barren woman to old fruitful woman. He done got impotent now. In other words, the Sarah never could fix the problem. Now he can't fix it in the natural. Don't you know when things get totally out of your hands, that don't still mean you're going to trust God? You draw back and make excuses. But God visited them. He was 99. She was 89. And God says to Abram, now your name is going to be Abraham. Her name is going to be Sarah. And they looking at Sarah laugh. He said, like, you know, like how y'all say that, God, you funny. When I was 13, 16, 22, 35, I couldn't do nothing. Now you're going to show up when I'm 89. I'm going to have a child. Why you didn't show up 15 years ago and save me all this Haggai drama? God said, that was the choice you made. And let me tell you a secret. Your choices have consequences. Can't blame God for it. Okay, we're in Romans 4.17. As it is written, as it is what? Got to stay with the book. As it is written, I have made thee, I have made thee, not I'm fit to, not I'm going to, not one day I will. And on God's end is what? Already done. I have made thee a father of many nations. If you understand that, then you'll understand binding and loosing. See, whatever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. It is that whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. Bridge through the uncompromising message that you heard today. If you would like to have this message in its entirety, send $8 for compact disc or $20 for video to the Reality of the Gospel Ministries Incorporated, P.O. Box 1640 91, Little Rock, Arkansas. 72216. If you would like to become a partner with this ministry, you may do so by joining the Ally 200 Club at $25 a month, or you may become a Truth Ally for $10 or more each month. Send your offerings to the Reality of the Gospel Ministries Incorporated, P.O. Box 164091, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72216. If you continue in God's Word, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free.